We go to Ghana State, where Governor Abdullahi Gandu Jehana has announced the suspension of lockdown earlier declared in the state to curb the spread of coronavirus. Governor Gandu Jehana made the announcement on Thursday while giving an update on the outbreak of the COVID-19 in the state. He also banned street hawking and begging, adding that it was compulsory for residents to wear face masks in public places. The governor declared that final year students could resume while all civil servants from grade level 12 should resume work from Monday next week. He explained that the workers would be in office from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., noting that it was necessary to ensure the full opening of the state economy following the significant reduction in recorded cases of COVID-19. Governor Ganduje, however, warned that the government would not hesitate to punish residents who fail to comply with the face mask policy. To speak on the situation in Kano State, we are joined by a Kano-based journalist, Gambo Sarki. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, could you tell us what's the reception to the announcement by the state governor? Yeah, thank you. The, the reception to what the state governor said um, yesterday evening at the Kanu State um, COVID-19 briefing, as usual, uh, was greeted by, uh, you know, I mean, a, a, a thunderous, you know, I mean, celebration in Kanu State. You can see relief on the faces of the people, on the faces of residents in Kanu State. People are happy that the lockdown has ended. The lockdown that began on April 16, you know, night, you know, has finally come to an end in Kanu State. And people are happy. They are happy because the lockdown, you know, was no longer effective. People were just being prevented from going, you know, to their workplaces, you know, to the market, and then you carry out their economic activities. Because... You, you know that... You know, Okay, uh, across all the places, the uh, restriction, uh, the lifting of the restriction has um, uh, brought about a spike in cases. What is your assessment of the level of compliance with the use of face masks and other um, guidelines issued? Uh, well, when it comes to the uh, I mean, observance of the health protocols as regards COVID-19, those I mean, health protocols are not being observed in Kanu State. It's, it's, it's a zero when it comes to Kanu State. Even the governor lamented that people are not, you know, using face masks. People are not really washing their hands the way they ought to. You know, he lamented and he even, he even threatened jail time for those who are not observing proper social distance, for those who are not, you know, using face masks in public places. Even after all these, you know, threats, people are still not using face masks. People are not, you know, observing social distancing. And, you know, even you go to some public places, they do not have, I mean, running water and a hand sanitizer to clean the people before gaining entrance into their, you know, public building. So the issue of obeying health protocols in Kanu is almost as zero. People so, are not obeying it. So and, um, when you talk about the spike in the number of um, COVID-19 patients, do not forget that, you know, over the weekend and last week, Kanu recorded less, less than 20 in an entire week. So just the one we, I mean, that was recorded yesterday, um, um, who could not have been attributed to the lifting of lockdown, that um, that was announced yesterday as well. All right, so um, you, you, you're, you're no. basically um, expressing reservation as to um, the compliance level. Would you now say that the lockdown may be a bit premature, or do you think it is a good time to go ahead if we consider all the other economic impact? Well, look, looking at the lockdown, talking about the premature nature of the lockdown, People are not observing the health protocols. So keeping them at home and locking down the economic, I mean, capability of the state is of no use. So it's better to allow the economic I mean, activities of the state to go on and then keep preaching to the people to observe the health protocols. You know, so it just, it, it, the, lock, the, the lifting of the lockdown, I mean, has, you know, is long overdue. Because it's not, you know, the purpose of the lockdown is not being fulfilled at all. The purpose of the lockdown is to maintain social distance and um, teach the people to put on their face masks and all the rest. It, all those things are not being observed. 
So locking down the state economic, you know, it, it, it's of no use. So the up of lifting the lockdown is long overdue. It's not premature. It's All just right. that um, the people do not have the culture, you know, of obeying, you know, things. Yeah, it, it, it's, it certainly so is far. tricky for a lot of persons uh, when you're used to being around people, communal living and all of that. That means the government has to think outside the box in an environment like that. So um, what do you think um, in terms of, you know, a strategy that is unique for uh, Kano State, considering the lack of uh, compliance with the social distancing rule that the government can use to at least minimize the impact of the spread of the virus? Um, when you look at the nature of Kanu State, you know, for you to know the power of the, of the religious leaders is that the markets were shut while the churches were open. The mosques were open. The Juma prayers were allowed to take place. That is a complete reversal of what is happening in Lagos and Ogun State. In Lagos and Ogun State, you have the market open, the churches and the mosques almost shut down. Now, when you look at Kanu State, that's to tell you that the religious leaders here in Kanu State have so much power, you know, to an authority to spread around. So the best thing that the state government can do now is to go back to the religious leaders, plead with them. To see how they can reach out to, to their people on how they can, you know, talk to them to observe the social distance as required and also the wearing of face masks and also using, I mean, hand sanitizers before getting entrance into public buildings like hotels, churches, and more. All right, now, before I let you go, we're, we're, we're time pressed, but before I let you go, uh, there's an aspect of the governor's uh, statement that I'd like you to look at. He did mention specifically that workers are supposed, civil servants, I mean, are supposed to uh, resume work from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. How about those who are business owners who may not fall into this category? Um, uh, how realistic is this, and what's your take on it? Um. He said, he also said that markets are allowed to open. He also said that all forms of business, illegitimate businesses, can go on on a daily basis. So while the civil servants resume their work at the state secretariat, out the back of secretariat, all other private businesses are allowed to open. So those who, don't, who, don't, who are not public servants, who are in the private sector, can also carry out their business activity. So everything, you know, the economics of the state is back on its foot. All right, Gambo Sarki, thank you very much for joining us all the way from Kanu. Thank you very much.